Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Just before dinner in the Bloom household, Papa hasn't arrived yet from business. The two girls are trying to sell Mama on an idea. Why do we have to stay home Sunday afternoon? Just when the weather's getting nice and the car's in good order, then you want us to stay home. Sure, we could drive to the lake. Yeah, and put up a picnic lunch. Who likes picnic lunches? Everybody does. Not everybody. Yes, everybody. Everybody means me too, and I don't like them. Well, you're the only one. If you want to eat, I say eat in the dining room. People don't eat in our field. That's just for cows. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. What kind of fun is it? The sandwiches that should have salt ain't got no salt. The cake that shouldn't have salt is full of salt. And in everything walks around little snakes and different insects. Insects, Ma. But good of all this talking. Sunday, we're staying home. Your grandmother's coming here. And if you girls ain't, your father's going to be very mad. But she was here last month. Why does she have to come on a Sunday? She couldn't get away any other day. I don't see why not. She's got all week to come over. Why does she have to pick on a Sunday? She can't go around on a streetcar by herself. English signs she can't read. And Sunday's the only day Uncle Morris has got the time to bring her in the car. Oh, my goodness. Is Uncle Morris coming, too? He makes me sick. Oh, darn it. Well, if they are coming and there's no way out of it, why can't they just come along on the picnic? Your grandma's too old for picnics. And your Uncle Morris, he can't go either. He's got bum dogs. You shouldn't say bum dogs, Mother. Say he has foot trouble. Foot trouble, bum dogs. Morris has got bunions. Well, why doesn't he see a chiropodist? Darling, when a man has got bum feet, how can you cheer him up? I'm not interested in Uncle Morris and his bunions. I wish they weren't coming on Sunday. Me too. You can't have any fun when Grandma's around. She's so quiet. What do you want your Grandma to do, play our saxophone? No, but when she's here, we just sit around and talk. Don't you love your Grandma? Oh, sure, I do. Sure you do, but only on weekdays. Listen, if you have to go, I can't chain you in the house. You ain't convoys. You mean convicts. Well, then you mean we can go to the picnic? Ask your papa. Oh, he won't let us go. I should say not. If Grandma wants to come over and Uncle Morris, too, we'd break a date with the President of the United States. You oughtn't to be so anxious to see her. She's your mother-in-law. Grandma Bloom is all right. I'll never forget the present she gave me when I started housekeeping. What was it? A beautiful mop. She bought it retail, just like a Gentile. That's a swell present. A mop. Why didn't she get you something ornamental? It was a beautiful mop, the very best. Oh, I think that's a terrible thing to give anybody for a wedding present. What good is a vase when you need a mop? What did Papa give you for a wedding present? Hmm. Papa gave me the same as I gave him. Nothing. Say, so listen, money wasn't so plentiful in those days. But Papa had a position then, didn't he? Your Papa had a job, not a position. Nine dollars a week is only a job. Is that all Papa made when you got married? That's all. Nine dollars a week, a job, and fifty-one dollars in cash. We made up our minds we wouldn't be married until Papa had saved up fifty dollars. So one day he came to me and he said, Becky, I have fifty-one dollars. Now we can do it. So we did it the very next day. Did you go anywhere on the honeymoon? Oh, you couldn't have gone very far with fifty-one dollars. Say, after we was married, we only had forty-four. Seven dollars to get married. I'll never forget it. Almost a whole week's work. Didn't you go for a honeymoon? 
They took a long streetcar ride. Papa knew the conductor. You mean he let you ride free? No, but we only had to pay one fare. Did you have a big party at the wedding? Not such a big party, but everybody had a good time. <laughs> we danced. I danced with Uncle Morris. In those days, he was a good dancer. He didn't have bunions yet. Everybody cried. Ah, it was a beautiful wedding. What did you wear? I wore a lovely dress from the best goods. I've worked for years. Yetta, you remember when you were a little girl, you had a lovely white dress? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, that was the good. Uh, well, I think it's a shame. I invited Sidney in. Well, I feel like a fool telling him it was put off. Yeah, and he was going to bring a fella for me, too. They can take you out Monday. Oh. Sunday ain't the end of the world. Besides, it's very fashionable for our lady to break engagements. You read it to me yourself, Yetta, from the paper. Advice to the lovesick. Oh, my, can't do that. We've already made the plans. Won't you please ask Papa? That I can't do. If it was my mother coming over, your Papa would go to two picnics. But it's his mother, so we can't even go to one. Hello, Mama. Hello, children. Hello, Papa. Hello, Hello darling. Hello. It'll be ready in a few minutes. Uh, why are you making faces? Why? Since I ate lunch, my stomach is killing me. Why didn't you have some bicarbonate of ice cream soda? Uh, I took it before lunch. I knew I was going to be sick. This morning when I got up, I felt bad, too. Why did you eat lunch, Jake, if you felt bad? So I shouldn't eat. What am I, a camel? Oh, yeah, yeah. What did you have for lunch? Mm, nothing. A little soup, some veal and potatoes with noodles, some boiled onions, apple cake, and a couple of glasses of tea. Uh-huh. You're on a diet. A man works, he's got to eat. Mm -hmm. Someday, if you keep eating like that, Jake, you'll have in your stomach ulcers. Ulcers, Ma. So it's ulcers. Veal you shouldn't eat in the middle of the day. With noodles also, you should get rhinocris of the liver, which is very, very painful. Did I come home for dinner or to listen to a lecture? You could listen to lectures. Twenty-two years I've told you on my bedded legs not to eat a heavy lunch, and still you're eating like a hyena. Twenty-two years you've kept talking, and still you've said nothing. Twenty-two years you listened, and still you could learn laughs. Oh, Ma, stop arguing with Pa. Yeah, you're right, yet. Jake, I apologize. If you want to have indigestion, go ahead and have it. From your stomach trouble, I don't get headaches. Uh, Papa... Are you starting? No, but... You know, Grandma and Uncle Morris are coming over Sunday. Sure, I know it. And we wanted to go to a picnic on that day. All right, put the picnic off. But we can't do that. You can't. You called it on, you can call it off. Besides, who likes picnics? We like picnics. If you like them this Sunday, you'll like them next Sunday. Oh, it may rain a week from Sunday. Yeah, it may rain this Sunday. Oh, well, I don't think so. How can you tell? Are you a better prospect? But it's so clear now. I just know it's going to be a swell day. If you know it's going to be a swell day this Sunday, you know it's going to be a swell day next Sunday, too. Don't be so gloomy. Be an optician. Oh, you mean an optimist, Ma. I thought an optimist was a man who makes up spectacles. Come on, come on, let's eat. All right, Jake, it ain't ready, but sit down. If it ain't ready, what's so good to sit down? Sit down and eat a radish. With my stomach, radishes. Chew it, and it won't hurt you. Radishes talk back to me. Don't answer them, then. How about the picnic? I told you a week from Sunday we'll have a picnic. Uh, I'll have the car wash. I think if you called up Grandma and, and you told her that we were going out, she wouldn't mind coming the next Sunday. I wouldn't do it. It wouldn't hurt you any if you did. How can you call up Grandma and tell her not to come over? Because we're going out in our field and eat sandwiches? Yes, yeah, she would be highly hurt. Of course. You can't say to an old lady, rather than see you, we're all going out and be uncomfortable. Maybe she'd come along. What? Grandma at a picnic? Eighty-seven years she eats in our dining room, and now she should eat in our pasture. Sure, she's too old for such nonsense. And your poor Uncle Morris with his hot dogs. How would he act at a picnic? Like a bull in a Chinese closet. Well, I wish you'd let me know so I can tell Sydney. Sarah, one hour we've been letting you know and still you're mixed up. Oh, it wouldn't hurt the many to go along if they're so anxious to see us. They pick the most inconvenient days to come calling. Yeah. Inconvenient? Who is it inconvenient it's for? It's inconvenient for me and Yetta. Listen, I'm sick of talking all day downtown. My partner's crazy. My stomach is burning me. So with all my other troubles, I should call up my own mother and my poor brother Morris and fight with them all about a couple of sandwiches that'll give me worse indigestion than I've got now. Let your pop alone with his indigestion, Sarah. Can't he enjoy poor health without you bothering him? Sure. I am laying down the law. Sunday comes grandma. Picnics we'll have later. If you've invited somebody, you can uninvite them. If he's a businessman, our cancellation is nothing new. Shall I call him up then and tell him it's off? Tell him. Tell him what you please. If grandma's coming here Sunday, we can't run away. Her, we can't take to a picnic, so the picnic is canceled. Don't bother your father. Call up Sydney. Oh, what will she tell him? Sure, he'll think I'm crazy. Tell him the picnic, which we was going to have Sunday, has been postscripted to next Sunday. Yeah, and what will he say? Okay, well, how can I tell what he'll say? Am I a magician? Whatever he says, the picnic is off. Call him now, and then we'll sit down and eat. Yeah, hurry up. Dinner is almost ready. All right, I'll call him after dinner. Call him after dinner.
Look, maybe maybe we could still have the picnic. Mama, how could we have the picnic? Say, who could tell maybe Grandma would like a picnic? Ah, Becky, you're talking like a fool. Eighty-seven years and suddenly she becomes a picnicker? Listen, Jake, last week in the papers, a man 102 years old got married for the first time. Yeah, if he would see what goes on in this house, the aggravation that I've got, he would think 102 is still too young. What aggravation have you got? What aggravation between knee pants and picnics with Sidney Schiff being thrown in? I've got enough aggravation to drive me to Michigan. Yeah, all day long you eat veal with restaurant noodles. You expect to have a disposition like a canary and sink all day? Uh, now, look, I'm not blaming you, Becky. I'm blaming Sarah. Don't blame Sarah. She's your own blood and skin. Sarah. Sarah. Aren't you glad you called off the picnic? Picnics you can go to all your life. Your poor grandma's an old lady. Give her a little pleasure. Also your Uncle Morris. One Sunday they want to come here. Ain't it nice that you should put off Sydney than to put off those two old people? Oh, I never looked at it that way. I didn't think they've got much fun coming over here. We just sit and talk. That's their kind of fun. What else have they got in life? Can grandma go dancing with gigolos? Can Uncle Morris take out chorus girls? The little pleasure they got in life is to see you, too. Surely that much you can do for them. Oh, gee, uh, I guess you're right, Ma. Of course I'm right. Look at it their way. How would they feel? All they got in the world is a little visit to see somebody they love. That's all. You're absolutely right, Ma. Oh, I'm sorry. I never thought of it. Same here. After all, we can have the picnic any time. I knew, my two children. I knew if I explained to you what it would mean to push off your grandmother, you wouldn't even let me do it. Oh, I'm glad you explained it to yeah. us. Should I answer it? No, you serve up the soup. I'll catch you. Maybe it's for me. If it's for you, I'll call you. Hello? How are you? Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're all right. I'm glad to hear it. You don't say. Oh, sure, it don't make no difference to us. Ha. Call us up and let us know, eh? All right. Goodbye. Well, Mama, who was it? Uncle Morris. What did they want? He called up to tell us he and Grandma are not coming here Sunday. Not coming? What's the matter? They can't come. They got a date. A date? Where are they going? They're going to a picnic. 